verge of emergence as an African superpower. Once an African success story molded on gold, oil and cocoa, it used its natural resources to produce strong economic growth in the early years of this century. Ghana met the Millennium Development Goal of halving property rates by 2015 and was held as a model of political stability after peaceful elections. But for the success story of Ghana to be fully understood, it's important to understand a bit of where the modern Ghana we see today came from. Modern day Ghana, which gained independence on March 6, 1957, and Kwame Nkrumah, a nationalist and Pan African leader, led the colonies push for independence. Believing that Ghana's sovereignty was crucial not only for the Ghanaian people, but for all of Africa, saying, Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Indeed, encouraged by Ghana's example, more than 30 other African countries declared their independence within the next decade. In addition, the new government led by Nkrumah swiftly built the groundwork for budgetary independence, launching a slew of economic development initiatives. Years of corruption, inefficiency and military rule stifled progress and achievement. However, by the 1990s, the country's situation had improved and Ghana is now regarded as an example of successful economic recovery and political reform in Africa. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce to you our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship rather than global PT is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and aren't subscribed to our channel, you're missing out. Accra, Ghana's administrative capital, is located on the coast. Accra, which was constructed on the sites of many gas settlements, grew into a rich trading herb and now serves as the country's commercial and educational center. Kumasi, another important economic center in Ghana, is located in the country's south-central region. Kumasi, popularly known as the Garden City of West Africa, is the seat of the Asante ruler, a relic of an empire that flourished in the 18th and 19th centuries. Ghana's inhabitants may be classified as belonging to one broad ethnic group within the African family. However, there are other subgroups. At least 75 of these can be distinguished based on their language. Many of them are insignificant, with only 10 being quantitatively significant. An effort has been made at all levels of government and public life to minimize ethnic disparities, a goal that has been aided by the adoption of English as the official language. Almost all of the current peoples are said to have arrived in the country in a series of migrations from the north during the previous 700 to 1,000 years, with the Ewe and Ga Adangme, who occupy the country's southeastern region, arriving from the east and southeast. More than half of the population is Christian, around a fifth is Muslim, and a minor percentage of the population practices traditional indigenous religions. But 